Yes. Okay, so we can start the recording if you want. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about error management. What are the errors that the SDK uh, could expose, the synchronization errors, and how we deal with data integrity? So we're going to start with error management. Uh, when synchronizing metadata, uh, maintaining the integrity of all information uh, can be a bit tricky, maybe. Uh, for this, in the SDK, uh, two main guidelines are taken into account. On the one hand, uh, that the synchronization does not fail. And for this purpose, the errors that may occur during the synchronization are stored. And on the other hand, uh, keep the metadata in integrity. And all these uh, metadata errors are stored uh, for inspection in the maintenance module. So you can access them. Like, for example, missing dependencies, they are foreign key errors or just generic API errors. So yeah, the SDK uh, might produce different errors and they are wrapped in a type of ex ex exception. Uh, this is the D2 error class. And it has uh, the five following fields. So the error component, the error code, the error description, the HTTP error code, and the original exception. So the first of them is the D2 error component, which is just the source of the error. It can be used to identify where the problem occurred, like for example, the server, the SDK, the database. The second one is the error code, uh, which is an enum with unique codes for the errors. These codes can be used for translation, so please use it. Uh, so for example, some of the errors that you can find are the app name is not set or invalid DHS2 version or the file is not found or file resizing image, etc. In addition to this two, uh, we can also find the the error description, uh, which is nothing more than a description of the error in English uh, with some technical details using for logging and debugging. The, the, the HTTP, uh, HTTP error code, if the error was caused by an HTTP request and the original exception, if any. So uh, in, in a call, in a, in a method, uh, we can see it in, an, this is an example in Eric's Java in a reactive way. So when you are, for example, uh, logging in, you can subscribe and get the user if everything go, goes well. But if you have an error, uh, you can just uh, parse the error and then you can access, for example, to log in the error code or to handle the error. But you can do it also with blocking operations. For example, in this blocking operation, which is the login to, you have here uh, the try catch, and then you can catch the the D two error and just access to the name or whatever you want to to log. Um, also the some errors like the ones produced in the SDK when syncing are stored in the database table. So they can be accessed uh, from the D2 error repository as any other table. So you can enter to the maintenance module, go to the D2 error repository, and you can get those errors. So you can list them or you can, uh, I don't know, you can do whatever you want with these errors. Maybe you can copy it and give it to your administrator. Okay, so now we are gonna talk about uh, the error management of the data. So when data has some errors. 
in the SDK, we try to identify, identify as many details as possible. So in the aggregated world, uh, we try to, to find the warnings uh, that could be caused in conflicting data values. And in the tracker world, uh, we use the tracker import conflict uh, that contain information about all the tracker entities. So the tag entity instance, but also the enrollment, some events that could be in the enrollment, also the tag entity attributes of the instance or the data elements of the event, the values, and the display description. And you can use them to show <clears throat> the errors in your application. Here's an example of the Android app uh, for capture where we use this display description of this data element to, to show the information and give some feedback to the user. So uh, they can uh, keep the, the data consistencies. Okay, uh, and now uh, data states. So the, the states of the data uh, could be different and um, these data objects have only a read, so a read only state. And this indicate the current state of the object in terms of synchronization with the server. And this state is fully maintained by the SDK. So you don't have to do nothing. You just have to, to read the, the states and you can use it to, to send it to a user. So these are the errors. We're gonna talk about them. So a sync uh, state is the when the element is just sync with the server and there are no local changes. So the data remains sync. Uh, the to post state is when you create some that data locally. So it not sits in the server yet, so you didn't post it. Uh, to update uh, means that some data that it was uh, in the server before, it was modified locally. So you have to update it into the, to the server. It also has the uploading state when you start and upload. And if you, for example, are syncing data, but in between the first uh, event of syncing the data and when it uh, finished the syncing, you modify some some value, it goes uh, again to the to update uh, state. So when the server response arrives, it state does not change to sync, but remains in to update. So you still having those local changes. Also, you have the error state that that is when you receive an error from the server after the upload, and the warning is the same, but when you receive a warning. You also have the relationship states. Uh, that's only uh, for fulfilling a relationship to another key, event, or enrollment. And this uh, relationship state means that this object only has basic information. So it doesn't have any enrollment or any event or other relationships. Those are not uh, downloaded for this um, entity. And also cannot be modified or uploaded to the server. So it's just for information to have in there about the relationship. Also, uh, there is two more states. If you are use, using SMS synchronization, uh, you have the send by, by uh, SMS. When that is, is sent by the SMS, um, there is no server response yet. Uh, but if you have the ability in the server to respond to those SMS, uh, you also will have the sync via SMS. In the skeleton app, uh, we just use these icons to, to show when there is an error warning or you have to post or update or delete the data as one is sync. Okay, and now that integrity, we have to take care about our data. So what are the SQLA database for in keys? Uh, well, they are, these are keys that link to tables in the SQL world, and it helps uh, to keep data integrity. For example, if 
you remove this tag in the instance, the enrollment will be removed too, because the enrollment can exist without a tag in the instance, because they are linked. Um, well, if we uh, take a look of the inconsistencies that they can occur in our service, well, we can have foreign key violations for wrong server configuration or just because the offline nature of the application, but it could be also an SDK bug. For example, during the synchronization, uh, the when you start a database transaction, you download the user, you download the data set, the program, and then you close the transaction. Well, in, meanwhile, the transaction is uh, taking so when it's happening the transaction, the foreign keys don't have to be satisfied. But when you close the transaction, then the foreign keys must be satisfied. So the objects that doesn't have uh, the foreign key satisfied will be deleted. So if we take a look into the inconsistencies based on the offline nature, uh, the users ha can have maybe a outdated version of the metadata or the data, and it could be a problem. I, I will just show you. For example, in the first step, we don't load the metadata, okay? So we have the metadata A. But then uh, several days before, you stay offline and the metadata is changed in the server, and you don't have these new updates. Then, uh, we don't load the data without re-downloading the metadata. So we start working and we try to push the data. So probably you will have a foreign key error. So that will uh, make you like to have inconsistencies in your data. So for that reason, the SDK is here and it will help you to, to remove the inconsistencies based of the offline nature of the work with the SDK. Also, the SDK could be used as a tool to diagnose server malconfigurations. So if you run Avance your server and you don't see any foreign key violations in the table, it's everything okay. But if you see many entries, uh, probably you have a misconfiguration in the server. So in this example, uh, if for example, we delete the tag in the instance, just what I said before, uh, the, the link, uh, the foreign key will be satisfied and so the enrollment will disappear. So it helped us to update the, the data. And all these foreign key violations uh, are in a repository in the SDK and you can list them uh, by going to the maintenance module for incubulations, and you can get the list of the foreign incubulations that you have in this repository. That's everything about uh, data errors management. If you have any question, just please take in contact and you can use the Slack channel. So now I think I'm gonna handle to my colleague, Victor. Victor, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Mm. okay, so let's go with uh, the last of the theoretical questions, sessions about the SDK. Um, this is just uh, a few words about um, some utility classes or services that are in the SDK and could be used yeah, to deal with uh, some of the logic or uh, particularities of the of the HS2. So, for example, uh, yeah, because in the SDK you have um, you have everything. Well, you have methods to synchronize, to create new data, to deal with those kind of things, but there are a lot of other things that are around that are pure DHS2 logic, like for example, the logic that is related to events. Um, for example, if you 
yeah, it, it is the app uh, who has to decide, for example, if an event is editable or not, just to show the form to the to the user. Right? Um, this looks simple, but it actually is not uh, because there is a lot of things involved in, in in this. For example, what we need to check, we need to check the the user access if the user has data access to the premise page. This is one thing. Also, if the enrollment as I see, uh, linked to the to this event is active. Also, if the org unit uh, has uh, if it has opening date, and also if the event date is within that range. And finally, the event has an attribute option combo associated with it with with that with the event. Uh, and these option combos are composed of category options, and we need to check that. The user has data correct access for all the category options in, that are uh, involved in this attribute option combo. And not only that, also we have to check that all the category options, if they have, in case they have uh, a start and end date, uh, we have to verify that the event date is within the range for all of them. So as you see, if there is a lot of things involved in in checking if an event is editable or not. And all this, yeah, this logic is going to be, is, yeah, it's incorporated in the SDK. Uh, we started in version 1.2, and it's a, it's a work in progress because there is a lot of things to, to do with it. Another example, if an enrollment can be, uh, if a user can access an enrollment or edit an enrollment. So it depends on the access level of the enrollment of the program. If it's open, protected, closed, the access level of the users for that program in particular, and also if the or unit of enrollment is in the capture scope or in the search scope. Uh, so yeah, again, a lot of things to to, to care of uh, just to the to the, to decide if an enrollment is editable uh, or not. Uh, another thing in the SDK is the Prom Indicator Engine. Um, this is used uh, to print the Prom Indicator value in the data entry form. I, uh, if you, you have in my in your mind the, the tracker capture, there is a small box with the Prom Indicators that help the user in the data entry form. So the SDK uh, can evaluate these prom indicators. Uh, uh, and this is an example. It's, uh, there is a new program module, a prom indicator engine, quite easy. And the last thing I want to mention is the validation rules. Uh, this is for aggregated data entry. Um, it is the, yeah, you know, the validation that you can configure in the data entry form to prevent uh, values that are out of that that don't meet uh, some requirements for example like the population and the five years is should be less or equal than the total population and yeah we are not going to do any exercise about this uh, it's just for you to know but um yeah i would like to do i guess a two minutes demo about this for example at least for you to know uh, how it looks like in the in the sdk in the yeah, in the application so uh, so what uh, so i have here uh yeah i have the skeleton application So we don't have any exercise for this, so I'm going to use a debugger. <laughs> Sorry, if I go to data set instances, I have one data set instance, the population. Uh, here I have less than one year, less than five years, total population, okay. So 
this looks okay. If I click here, I finish the yeah the I save the, the the values. Okay, so what is happening when I click this button is here. Uh, so what I what I'm doing here is uh, I want to trigger the validation rules for this for this uh, data set. So security two validation module validation engine block invalidate. And here I have in the context I have so I need to do pass the data set BID. It's in the context video or unit UID as you become. As you can see, it's quite easy to um, to evaluate the validation rules for a combination of data set video organization unit and attribute of the combo. So I went to set a uh, point here, launch in the back mode. As I said, this is just to take a look uh, 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 at how the SDK can be used to evaluate this expression. Nothing else. So I go back to data set instances. Okay, everything is okay. So if I click here, I get here the result. I hope you can create this more or less, but I have an status. Okay, so there is no violations. All good. So if I change, for example, population 1,000, not more than that, 5,000, the total population is 3,000. So it should give me an error. Let's see. In the debugger. Result, status, error, violations, two violations actually. Because, and here you can take a look at the left side of the expression, the right side, also with a display expression. So you can give some feedback to the user like this part should be less than this other part. So the population under one year should be less than the population under five years. Uh, here, and you have also the value, so you can regenerate the expression to to give proper feedback to the user to know what's going on and, go, and why uh, the validation rule has failed. So yeah, so that's all. So this is yeah, <laughs> this kind of demo. Maybe for the next version, we can prepare an exercise about validation rules. So. That's it. That's all from my side. Yep. Uh, so let's go to the to the next session. Uh, unless there is any question, if this if there is any question.